Okay, so I've got the best fit line for my linearized graph of position versus time squared, but I still don't have a, a maximum slope line and a minimum slope line. So I want to show you how to put those in. Uh, the nice thing about uh, Logger Pro 3.10.1 is I can actually put in a manual line and move it around wherever I want. So the first thing I want to do is with the graph open as it is, I want to go under curve fit. I want to pick a linear curve because I know it's, uh, I want to put in a maximum sloped line. Okay, and then up here under fit type, I'm going to pick manual. Okay, press OK. Now notice that gives me a new uh, manual fit line. Okay, now at this point I still can't move that around, so I'm going to uh, click on, double click here on the name of it. And down here, it gives me the choice to enable the line drag. I'm going to put that on. I'm also going to change my position to 2 to match the other. I'm also going to click on Appearance, and I'm going to change the color to red. Okay, just to help differentiate it from the other graph, uh, from the best fit line on this graph. Okay, so that's everything I need. Now, by enabling line drag, watch what happens to my pointer tools. I get over the line, I get this little squiggly arrow thing. Now I can drag the line to wherever I want. Okay, now the points I want to drag it to are, so here are my error bars up here. If you think of them, they're forming a little box, or you can think of it as an oval. So uh, basically a point in here is where I want to drag the upper section to. Something like that. So it kind of intersects with the two error bars, like so. And then down here on the bottom, based off of this error bar, which is very tiny on the one side, so basically I'm just going to want to try to drag it down to a, just a little bit right about there. Okay. Now, I'm going to move these around a little bit. So this is going to be the best fit. I'm going to leave that in the middle. This one is going to be the max, so I'm going to put it up on the top. Okay. Now, it's really important at this point, if you don't want to get frustrated, to double-click here and then turn the enable line drag off. Okay, that way you won't accidentally grab that line again and move it again. Now that you've got it in place, it's in place and you can be happy with it. Okay, I'm going to repeat the process one more time. Curve fit. I'm going to take a line. I'm going to take manual. I'm going to hit OK. All right, now that gives me another manual fit. Okay, I'm going to double click on that. Again, I'm going to enable line drag. It gives me the chance to move it around. I'm going to pick uh, two decimal places to match up with the others. I'm also going to change the appearance. I'm going to change it to blue. Okay, so now I have a red for max and a blue for min. Uh, you know, it's just a way to help you make sure you know which line is which, really. Uh, click OK. Now, because I've enabled the drag again, I can drag it. Now, this time I'm aiming for a minimum slope line, so I'm going to go for the bottom right of the box area, right in about here. <clears throat> Something like that. So again, this should meet around here. And then I want to go with the upper left of this little box in here, which is probably something about there. All right, notice that gives me a good pivot point right in about here which is what I want. I didn't mean the pivot point would be nicer if it's a little more toward the middle, but that's not bad. I'll accept that. And that's blue and it's minimum, so I'm going to move this box down low. Okay. So it's minimum slope, uh, best fit slope, linear fit, and then manual fit or the max. Now, I haven't been able to find any way at this point to change those names. I'd like to change that to max fit and that to min fit, uh, but I haven't figured out how to do that. That might be for a future broadcast. But as of right now, I really have everything I need to come up with the equation. Uh, the equation for this graph is x, the vertical uh, value, is equal to the slope of the line, 0.12, plus or minus one half of the difference between the max and the min. So that's 0 0.14, 0 0.11, take half, that's point um, so it's 0.3, take half of that, it's 0.015. Now we can have up to two figures in our uncertainties, no more than two though. So that would give me an uncertainty for the 
um, slope, and then I can also do the y-intercepts. My actual y-intercept is 0.69, and then I have 0.2 and 0. I'm sorry, 0.2 and 1.07. So 1.07 minus 0.2. That's roughly 0.8. Take half of 0.8. I'm at 0.4 for my uncertainty. So with that picture, I can go ahead and uh, write the entire equation that I need for this particular analysis. Now, of course, you also have to show actual slope calculations. So another thing you can do is click on X equals. That's the examine button. And then you could move it and get a couple of different points preferably one upper right and one upper left, and then use those points to actually calculate the slope and to show the slope calculation. So other than that, you just have to kind of read it off the graph. Uh, if you want to print the graph, really, you know, you definitely want to save this particular uh, file. And, you know, I would say save early and save often so it doesn't disappear on you. Uh, terrible to do a whole bunch of work and then have it gone because you forgot to save. Uh, the second thing I would say is you can, when you want to print it, I highly suggest printing the graph. Okay, print the graph. Uh, if you're doing it someplace where it's not your own printer, you can click on print footer and then put your name here so that you'll know, you know, it's yours. Um, also, you know, when you're printing, um, you can go to properties, and one of the things you can change is it might be nicer to have this as a landscape format. Okay, and now I print it. Uh, now I should get a nice, it should be just the graph without all the ex excess data and things I don't want. And it should give me a nice big uh, graph on the page, easy to read, easy to work with. Again, if you're using an older version of Logger Pro and it can only draw the best fit line, then go ahead and print it and use your ruler and draw your pick your pivot point, draw your maximum slopes that way, and calculate your maximum lines. Okay, so that's how you can use Logger Pro to get your graphs done. Now I have two graphs this time. I would, if I'm going to turn this in as a paper copy, I'm going to print both of them and uh, turn in both of those. Uh, if I'm going to turn it in digitally, I'm going to save both of those and turn in both those files as separate graphs. Here I kind of have everything on one graph. Although if I go back to time, I'm going to have to redo, um, I'm going to end up with a quadratic and I'll have to redo the best fit and I'll have to get rid of all the other fits uh, to switch in between. But I can switch back to time, all right, and then I'd have to rescale and, and so forth if I wanted to for whatever reason. Um, not something you're going to want to commonly do. You probably just want to print each graph as you finish it or take a screenshot of it. Uh, one of the great tools is Snagit. If you can afford to buy Snagit, it's not too expensive. Uh, you can get that, and you can snag any picture, any graph you want, and put it anywhere you want it. If uh, you're using a school computer, we should have it on the school computer. Okay, well, that finishes that. Uh, if you have questions, again, just uh, get in touch with me, and I'll see what I can do for you.